So um, okay. So good morning, everyone. Um, let's start the inter ACE interim meeting of February twenty-five. Um, I'm, I'm sure everyone is aware of the not well. Not let us know. Um, do we have a minute ticker? I'm taking minutes into the etherpad. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have the blue sheet, everything. So maybe we can start directly a topic. What's called profile. Thank you. Next, status update. Um, yeah, so you might have seen the very extensive review from Ben. I was hoping he would be able to join, but um, probably not. Um, so the status right now is I implemented most of the changes from Ben's uh, review. There is a pull request, which is still open. Um, I got some additional minor comments this morning, and I also have implemented those. So this is basically ready to be merged, and I don't foresee any issue with that. Um, yeah, and issues is um, is summarized uh, in uh, in in the uh, issue twenty six. So you can see it's like eighty nine out of one hundred five comments are answered right now. So if you do want to take a look at the draft right now, the diff with the latest submission is here, and there are some other other open points that were discussed in the thread with Ben um, and that I would like to bring up here. So everything that is still open is in the next slides. Next. So uh, two of the points that, that Ben had was, it is a um, bit of a, um, one second, let me mute here, yes. Um, it's a shame that we have to uh, find algorithm based on annoyed when I see it, because we say you need to select HMAC based HKDF algorithms and AAD algorithms from the COSI algorithms that are HMAC based or AAD. Um, but we don't really have a way of saying that, uh, as COSI doesn't really specify a way to different, differentiate. So just wanted to check with you that that's correct. And um, yeah, it's not something that I plan to fix. So, so um, just uh, yeah. for me to, mm -hmm. um, to understand, I mean, um, Ben is asking you to specify that explicitly? No, Ben was asking if there is a way uh, to, to know which algorithms are without, um, without having to actually look at the description of the algorithm. For example, if Posi specified uh, AAD algorithms are in this range, then I could have said in this range. Um, um, that's something I've never seen in any of our registries any place. So, yeah, I don't know why he would I want mean, it. I guess like, if you had different uh, registries for different algorithms, yeah. yeah. No, it, it just makes sense. Yeah, but my answer was... If you, look, if you look at object identifiers, there's no differentiation. You have to know what it is. Yeah. So yeah, my answer was, this is the way COSI uh, defines them, and that's the best we can do. So he, he's fine. He just wanted this um, to be clarified. Like, anyway, feel free to answer him if you want in that email. Uh, the points are uh, 43 and 44. So it's a bit lost in the in the in the 
sea of text, but yeah. So the next comment was about the replay window. So right now this Oscore security context has um, a field called replay window or right now in the last submitted version. And the idea was that the AS is able to tell the resource server what type and size of replay window to use. But after Ben's comment, I do not see a reason why the AS should send this info to the RS. And these are implementation related um, details. Each RS could have its own. And uh, Ben agreed that he doesn't see the point of having this field in the Oscar security context object. And if it's needed in the future anyway, we can add it as there is a registry for adding parameters. So I removed it. I, it's now done in the PR, but I wanted to bring this up in case anybody had objections. I don't think I can. Great. So then the next point. Um, so this is, uh, um, yes. So the profile indicates that the client AS and or resource server AS use of score, or is that information not expected to be encoded in any protocol element? So this is a question that Ben had in the review because in the OSCORE profile, we specified that OSCORE is, is used between client and resource server. That's the whole point of the profile to set up OSCORE between client and resource server. And um, we say that the client AS and RSAS is uh, optional. It can be OSCORE, but it can be anything else too. So if you could go to the next slide. I pasted the, the whole section of this uh, review at our exchange here. So my answer was, as of now, that the information is not expected to be encoded in any protocol element. Um, and I wanted to, and also Ben wanted to uh, hear from the working group if there are other known uses like this. I'm not 100% sure what he means by other known uses, but I just wanted to make sure that we're doing the right thing here. And okay, um, I can't type and talk at the same time. Uh, one, this is what I expect to see. Two. Uh, another known use for this is the MQTT profile, which is using TLS and the MQTT messages, uh, token messages, between, and, and the, the it's using JSON instead of CBOR, and it's actually talking different ways between the server and the between this, between the broker and the client, and the client and the the AS at times, they don't have to be this. They're not. You're not talking the same MQTT profile. Yeah. You talk to the AS. So my understanding from from the framework is, the profile can optionally specify what is the protocol or the security protocol used between client and AS and RS and AS. But they don't have to. That, that is my understanding as well. Yeah, and um, and then what he is asking is, okay, where do you put this information? If, but I guess that's just that you want to indicate a client and yes, are talking uh, um, all score as well. Where do you encode that? And my answer is, I don't, I don't know that you encode they're it they're anywhere. Not talking, they're not, they're not talking using the ACE profile no. of OSCOR. Mm -hmm. They're just using straight yeah. OSCOR or, or yes. just DTLS. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's good for me. I just uh, wanted to bring this up. I don't think there's anything. There's not nothing I we have to do here. I can't think of anything to say. I can't think of anything to say that would make things clearer or less clear. Um, one question would be: Does he have the same question about the DTLS profile? I do not know. So this is this might be something that uh, we want to continue the conversation with Ben. Um, this is like one of the last points, so it's easy to miss in the last mail mail that uh, I sent to Ben. But um, yeah, I see this as a non-issue for the OSCO profile and with uh, nothing to do. So next slide, please. Okay, so these are the um, bigger open points. The first one was this um, mechanism of letting the resource server pick the identifier of the client, which um, Ben commented on. And after some discussion with my co-authors, I we agreed that probably it's be best to just remove this and just assume that um, there is one AS that is going to assign identifiers. Um, and Jim, you had a comment that I reported here. It's not the only consideration. Uh, the above statement presumes that only the AS is going to be assigning client identifier. If the RS uses a different method of doing authentication, such as Lake, then there is a chain chance for collision at that point as well. Um, how? Would you run Lake? I think that running Lake with the Oscar profile would need to be specified somewhere. What I'm thinking in terms of is a resource server mm -hmm. that is talking using an ACE profile on some resources and using Lake on other resources. On the same resource server. On the same resource server. Yes means that the OSCOR message comes in and it's got two it's, it's got two potential con context to do the decryption with both of which are the same ID mm -hmm. so if yeah. if you only keep one of them then you may throw the wrong one away if, like me, you say it's a hint, you keep both of them and you just decrypt with both of them, so it's not it's not a huge deal. I am totally happy to make it an operational consideration. Yeah. And that not have sense. it in the protocol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Also, there was a to-do in the draft to define an error response in case there is ID collision. And this could be an optional error response in case the resource server doesn't know how to deal with it or doesn't want to try all the 10 different, I don't know. Um, is this something that we need to do? What's your opinion? Um, I would say not until somebody brings it up as a problem. If, okay. if we're going to get pushed back, let's just go ahead and if, if we're not solving the problem, mm -hmm. let's. No, it's not solving. It's just giving one more. Uh, right. And here's the yeah. question. When you get that error, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. That's, uh, I guess that, yeah, that doesn't really help, does it? If we don't define some mandatory, um, mechanism behind it. So if I, because um, I don't really remember, but I think it's a peer identifier, is it? 
Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Because the the way it works with IPsec, it's um basically what I'm saying is I'm sending my identifier, which means the other peer is gonna be is gonna use this one to send me some message. And and the peer is telling me what is going to be his own identifier. Yes, that's what so that's, that's that is what it was doing. And so I don't understand if we're doing the same thing. I don't see oh collision because yeah, you I mean the the authorization server is going the identifier for the resource. No, it's giving the identifier for that encryption context. Okay, but then how can we have collision? It's unclear to me. Um, right now, those identifiers are being assigned by the AS or by some other protocol. Mm -hmm. So if you, for example, had a resource server which talked to two different ASs. Okay. They could both assign the same identifier. Yeah. Okay. I see the problem. I always expected to have only one AS, so okay. <laughs> yes. If you only have one AS, there's no problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, but I, I think to re uh, resolution of this would be add some considerations about uh, there is a chance for collision anyway if you're using different method of, of authentication and do not define an error response. I believe that's what we said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the other thing is um, uh, still with IPsec, we, we also have when you have cluster, it's the same thing. You need a sort of coordination. Um, so that's typically something we can document, say, when you have multiple AS, you need to make sure there is no collision. That would be part of the considerations as well. Yeah. So uh, I think that's really, I mean, um, it's reasonable to, to document this problem and uh, say it's um, up to the deployments to, I mean, they can have a, a to fragment the space of uh, IDs or coordinate between whatever they need, but just just mention that as a consideration. Yeah, will do. Okay, uh, next point. Recommendation about length of nonces N1 and N2. Um, yeah, so Ben was asking why 64 bits and Jim, you were answering that this should be sufficient and um, Ben said, yes, it probably is, but I'd like to know what level of analysis has already been done. Um, on a practical point of view, I like to understand what are we supposed to add to the document? I don't think we have to add anything to the document. We just have to make Ben happy. <laughs> yeah, how, how, do we, how do we make Ben happy here? And the answer is all I've done is to see to, see to my pants. All you've done is? See to my pants. Um, I looked at it and I said, yeah, that looks right. Yeah. Um, okay. This is one of those arguments that I get in with the TLS people. Mm -hmm. um, I will try to respond to that. That, that would be very appreciated. Okay, otherwise, yeah, I can think more about this, but yeah, right now I'm a bit, uh, don't really know what Yeah, what type of analysis we want to do also because okay 
we might want to add some consideration about the fact that this is an exchange that happens um, at the beginning of, so, so setting up communication between client and resource server and um, well, the analysis that needs to be looked at it has to cover two things. Uh, one is how often are ACE tokens going to, how often is the key in an ACE token going to be reused in terms of re-registered? Mm -hmm. And what sort of randomness is expected from both the client and the server to make sure you don't do a, re you don't generate the same key twice? That's the analysis he's looking for. Yeah, but number, how many times is this going to happen? That's, that's kind of very much deployment. I mean, applications, yeah, that's why I'm stuck, that, but that's, okay. yeah, I mean, that's one of those things. It depends on how, how much you think tokens are going to get lost on the server. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for sure, that's, this is not, uh, not anything we can be inferred from a score because this use of nonsense. So, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. If you could start or continue the conversation with Ben, that would very be very much appreciated, Jim. Just to like try to figure out what if there is anything that we can add to the text. Um, duration or anything. Okay. I guess it's right that that uh, um, a side that is aware of of heavy rekeying uh, could use a larger nonce here. Did that question make sense? Uh, are, are you suggesting that I add some text like that? I missed the beginning of the... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find out whether th those 64 bits uh, have to be good for eternity and all use cases or whether um, <clears throat> one of the two sides uh, could decide I'm, I'm in a use case where I actually want to have a little bit more entropy and uh, can simply add that. Mm. Yeah, this is used as input material with the rest of the uh, um, authorization server provided input material to derive the security context. So it's not whenever this master secret or master salt and all of that is changing, um, it's not only about the nonsense providing the, uh, yeah. Right. The, all I'm trying to, to, to say is that you might have a, um, one response here, which is that if, if any of the two sides is aware that there is a need for more than 64 bits, they can just go ahead and send it. Yeah, but uh, if I read that, I would get a bit more confused uh, if I was an implementer because I'd be like, okay, how do I know if there is a need or more than, how do I know if eight bytes is enough for me? Well, if you think that a two to the power of 128 and the square root of that um, is, is a problem for you, uh, because you, you're getting yeah. close to that square root, then you should send something bigger. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so I've been some consideration about that as well. Yeah, of course. And the, the other consideration is whether those 64 bits actually have enough entropy. Uh, but uh, I think there's there's nothing that would guarantee that 
sending 128 would suddenly have enough entropy if you're not able to generate enough entropy for 64 bits. So th th there's very little we can do about that. And usually the argument is that um, in, in a communication, you would uh, want to have at least one side uh, contributing enough entropy that you don't run, run into birthday paradox problems. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I think, uh, okay, I will try to add some text like that. Um, and, and let's try to also continue the conversation with Ben. And then the last point is Ben did not want us to use xenons and he wants us to register two new ACE parameters to transport the nonces. And since this was a decision that was taken in the working group during the meeting, uh, I just wanted to check that the working group is fine with doing this change. I don't have a strong opinion. So, yeah, I don't care, but uh, yeah. Just uh, if I don't hear an objection, I will just do the change. Okay, I think that should be it for the score profile. Okay. So the the plan now is to recap. I will do the the changes that it's just a couple of changes that were discussed today. Uh, as soon as Ben uh, gives me the OK, I merge the pull request and submit a new version. I don't know if I will submit one or two new versions. I could submit one version and then do the changes we discussed today. Um, and yeah, we keep. I don't know. Yeah. Do we have any preference to do? If it's easier for you, I mean, uh, me, I don't care, but um, I, mean, I, can um, do, I, can, I can do two updates so that it's okay. easier to see the latest change. And, um, and then we continue the conversation with Ben. So that's it. Okay, good. Great. Uh, just for the sake of agenda bashing, uh, Francesca needs more time, especially for the pops up profile. I think it's better if she con continues with that. Yeah, and probably um, SIGDEM is more concerned by the uh, pops up. Am I correct? I did them in the review, definitely. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to find them. Oops, sorry. Okay, right. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Next. Um. Yeah, we set up the repository. Uh, pops up profile. I started doing the modifications. I'm a bit uh, late with this work as I was working heavily on the OSCOR profile. So I'm sorry for, for the delay. Um, but I started the restructuring. And as I mentioned, um, this now defines to app application profiles of ASCII GroupCom, the MQTT pubs up and co op pubs up. And it's also up to date with the ASCII GroupCom. So next, put in the, the table of contents from the draft right now. So this, uh, what I was expecting is not much text added at all. It's just some uh, restructuring of a general text and, and co-op or MQTT um, specific text. Uh, right now, the MQTT publisher, so 4.2 and 5.2 are empty. Uh, these are supposed to be examples of what the publisher and subscriber um, would send to the 
um, key, to the key, to get the to the to get the keys. And yes. So you say example because um, most uh, I mean all the normative material is going to be put into the MQTT profile. No, this is something additional to the MQTT profile. This is the uh, application profile, and all the normative text is in the section four and five, and then the four point one and, and uh, four point two and five point one and five point two just give a um, the uh, detail on the formatting. For example, the co-op. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Uses Seabor and go up while MQTT. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see. But uh, I I would love to to hear uh, Sigdem comments if she has any. Sigdem, I actually sent you an email. I don't know if you saw it. Um, I didn't see your new email about this. Um, I would definitely um, uh, look in. Um, there were I was by or, uh, former review comments about um, how in the MQTT profile we don't um, separate very distinctly the publisher subscriber a client can serve as both um, and whether um, similar narrative can be kept um, in this uh, profile and whether there are limitations to that. Yeah, so so I would love to to uh, collaborate. I do want to look at the profile? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can. I can definitely collaborate on this um, on on these sections. If you would like me to put some text there, I would definitely. Um, that would be awesome. So yeah, let's continue this uh, either offline or I think that uh, I don't know if you you want to get some some time to talk about this and. Um, after you had a chance to to review, as I said, the text has changed a lot. It's just the structure, but you probably have better ideas of what needs to be added. And okay, uh, yeah. I missed the first part of the sentence. So, but yes, um, let me have one uh, a few days to look at the. Uh, yeah. That you were already um, answering some of my review comments regarding um, what the application profile name will be like and etc. So I just want to make sure what are the outstanding comments and then um, yeah. discuss offline yeah. with you about how to address them. That would be perfect. And the the plan that I would like to have here is to, uh, yeah, uh, talk to seek them, collaborate, and hopefully submit an update by the the cutoff so i'm not in um i i still want to get the oscar profile done the, could you cut off is 11th of march i think okay okay yes. right i can give you my mqtt update as work that uh, until so I will be able to push updates to both uh, MQTT TLS, uh, TLS profile as well as this um, after that but immediately so uh, and we'll make the cutoff sounds deadline good. that sounds great uh, so so sorry it's, yeah ninth I think Kasten said that but it was breaking up okay after um, around my first. Let's continue this offline. I think that, uh, yeah, it, this was just to, to let the working group know that, yes, I have restarted this and I'm looking at it and I'm, yeah, planning an update. Great. That's good. That was so, it for me. Okay. So the next agenda item is
acekeygroup.com. So okay, so maybe just um, um, I'm just wondering if um, uh, we can make a status to, uh, with the MQTT now. Totally fine. To me. Okay, thank you, Marco. So this profile, I uh, not much changed uh, from the previous um, meeting. That's what I was trying to say. I may be delayed. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. This uh, meeting, I have a of changes and uh, clear uh, ways to uh, progress on them based on the decisions we made in the previous meeting. I just have to push them. So I'm hoping to be able to get to that um, around, again, March 1st deadline. Okay. Yeah, so that's, um, it's, uh, thank you. So um... Delay, it's more delayed than I... Yeah, no, no, that's, um, I mean, uh, you don't have to apologize. That's uh, so, but um, I guess that, um, do we expect, I mean, for the MQTT, I think we expect it to be almost the last version, is it? That's, that's what I'm aiming at, definitely. But I also okay. um, get a final uh, review from, um, it is very close to final currently. okay because one of my um, um i don't know but uh, the thing I, i'd like to discuss is um so once this version is published um if we expect it to be final i i, I would like to have um maybe um some people um reviewing carefully the document i'm just wondering if um you have in mind some some um, people we can designate or ask privately to review that uh, carefully. Um, I think that would speed up the sending it, the document to the ISG. So I'm, I'm, this is something I'd like to discuss with um, um, you all. If you you know some people, we should ask to review those um, this document. ACE working group outside the way ACE working group. No, within the ACE working group, uh, because I, I, my my expectation is that if it's in working group last call, we don't get so many reviews, and um, okay. I think it would be better to. to I, I recently to ask received three. a few questions from Hannes. Uh, he sent a few questions about the profile. Okay, so to the, Hannes. To the list. Uh, he, uh, I'm guessing he might be uh, looking into it, but it's a guess. Yeah, we can uh, definitely ask him. Um, any other people? Um, I was wondering uh, the one from Microsoft. Um, is it Michael Jones? So I understand that we don't have many people that are uh, likely to review or we think should be designated as reviewer. Okay. So Let's move on to the next publication. The next next uh, point. So I think that's Marco. Yes. And the other one, though, is better to see first. Is keygroup.com. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
I, ke uh, I kept the slides minimalistic, so I didn't plan to spend as much time as I did at the previous interim. But uh, yeah, it's mostly all here. Um, essentially, we started to take care of the comments, mostly from the discussions at the interim and uh, the review we got from Jim mm, that same day. Uh, created issues for, for each point, and this is a summary of the actions taken. Uh, many of them were just editorial or little less. Uh, we made a clarification on the meaning of uh, the CS alg parameter indicating the signature algorithm in the group, and the relative requirement was a little ambiguous. Um, we clarified also that uh, the moment key material is updated on a node, that node is supposed to not use that material anymore for outgoing messages, especially. Then you still have the possibility for special policies for retaining it a bit for um, incoming messages. Uh, we clarify you may have different reasons uh, out of which building policies for uh, failing in processing incoming messages. So we were considering only uh, the keys I have don't work, but you may have as a separate case, I just don't find any context at all that I can even try. And they may be handled differently with different policies. Um, we clarified also that the moment the KDC decides to rekey the group and to distribute a new key material to the group, that's enough for incrementing the version number of the key material, regardless any possible accuracy that the KDC wants to enforce for getting confirmation of distribution from the group members. And then the last two bullet points were a little bigger, but they should reflect well enough what we decided about them at the interim. So we introduced um, a new, in principle, optional uh, resource that uh, a joining node can decide to allocate on itself, uh, signaling uh, the path to that resource to the KDC upon joining as an additional parameter in the join request. And that's useful uh, for the KDC to contact individually for control reasons uh, that group member, for instance, to send uh, raking messages. So that's why also I try to keep the, a generic name like control path rather than raking path or something like that. And uh, also putting together an initial discussion and last comment from Jim, um, we added a new sub resource uh, which is actually a sub-resource to the node sub-resource. So in the sub-resource of every node, uh, we have a pub key sub-resource um, where that node can possibly upload a new public key. And we started to see a possible need for this um, in case, as we are describing in a separate document, the group administrator changes the signature algorithm in the group and that may force all group members to provide the KDC with um, a new workable public key there. So they may need uh, to upload a new one uh, rather than, of course, just leaving the group altogether and, and join again. They will take probably more time. Uh, but yeah, the last two bullet points were the, the major one, I would say. Um, if you can move to the next slide, is just about uh, one big open point I can think about other than continue processing a few points left in Jim's review and in Peter's review. Um, as to the first uh, open bullet point, um, that's something we, we kind of resume discussing yesterday and this morning, depending on the time zone, um, with Jim. We were considering already at the previous interim to improve scope to cover at once not only one topic group, uh, but multiple uh, at once. And we seem to agree already in a kind of format that can work that way. Um, regardless this, we started kind of a side discussion related to having a same group member, um, well, the same node member of different groups under the same group manager, um, kind of forced to have different public keys, one for a group and one for another. For instance, because in the different groups, different signature algorithms are used, and you just have to end with mm, two public keys. And Jim has some comments on that, but I, I think it's kind of a separate thing, regardless the way you exactly format the scope. So we can work on both aspects in parallel. 
the scope format itself seems a safe way to go. Then we need more thinking on the public key uh, point, I think. Uh, that was it from my side on this document. Uh, if anyone has any comments or questions. Any comment? So, um, when, when do you plan to, um, oh, I think Jim, something he lost his audio apparently but he's saying yeah we'll look through it also for his implementation and go forward next week <laughs> okay so um you ex you expect this one to be one of the latest version i mean in your opinion well the latest update one of or how far do you think you're after yeah. this i would realistically expect one more update uh, okay. That's aligned also with the original estimation we had uh, a month ago or so before even scheduling the first interim. Okay. Uh, unless, of course, very big issues come later on. And for the for the other document we are discussing uh, after this one, well, same thing plus one, I would say. Okay. You have to, test to chase this one, of course. Okay. So, yeah, it's just, it just for me to to understand and um, it's also <laughs> right. I, see, I see the window time before I, can, I have to review that uh, getting slower and slower getting shorter and shorter <laughs> okay so I need to review those documents all right so thank you I will probably have a um, heavy review on those documents after the ITF mm -hmm. um, yeah so Is it good? Yeah. About the point that Marco brought up, um, I think if we have a second to discuss it, that would be good because uh, the point is, the question is, do we think it is a valid scenario that a node um, that is doing group communication, that is talking to one authorization server to join two different groups, will use two different keys, public keys, um, to sign or countersign the communication. Um, I, and also different algorithms, signature algorithms. So I'd like to hear if people have opinions on that, because considering if the node is constrained, you might think that it will anyway only have one algorithm, one uh, signature alg algorithm implemented, and and it will. Just, I don't see why it wouldn't just use one key. Um, so, without knowing uh, probably a lot of discussion on this topic and so on, I, I, I mean naturally, I would think that having uh, two different keys. Um, it's for two different groups. It's for two yeah. different groups. The groups could be set up so that one group uses one signature algorithm and another group uses a different one. So the node has to have those implementations and everything. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're not talking about keys, but different algorithms. Uh, public keys. Yeah. And possibly, and possibly public keys or public and private keys, mm -hmm. future keys. Um, yeah. Oh, the memory is it. I think we have to have different keys is to make sure that communications cannot be correlated between the different groups. Yeah. I need different keys um, and um, I was uh, trying to bring that up with using the group communication in the context of the pub sub right um, when you register to multiple topics and each topic is
subject topic, then you would want that to be using different keys. Um, I, I had in mind something kind of in the middle, uh, actually. Um, assuming a node supports the algorithms needed to be in the groups uh, it wants to be, um, I think it's fine that the node has one public key per algorithm it ends up using. Um, so if we have three groups, one with algorithm A and two with algorithm B, and the node wants to join all three of them, I would expect the node all in all to have two keys. So not one per group, but one per used signature algorithm. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, um, um, I see where you... But also, the point is that we don't have to specify that, um, but what do we allow? I don't know if it's clear. Of course, we don't have to specify uh, that a group, like all group uh, for a certain AS have to use the same signature algorithm, but well, no. um, what, it, what do we support though? That's the, that's uh, the, the starting point is the administrator creating the group and configuring it to use a particular algorithm. Uh, a node wanting to access the group has to support that algorithm. Uh, if it enters, it has to provide a public key that works with that algorithm. That's what we are saying, essentially. Um, so, yeah, th what I understood first is that you say, I mean, um, my understanding, not not that you say that, but um, that if we have different groups, we may use the same key, but then we have to use different algorithms. That's up to the group creator to decide. Uh, yes, uh, the group members don't really have control on, of how the groups work. Yeah, but uh, I don't think, okay. So because, what, so, so it's, it's true that it seems better to have uh, one identity per group. And the, I mean, if you suppose the identity is a public key, um, but um, I don't see any, any motivations for having uh, different um, signature algorithms uh, if you you have different groups, um, especially because, I mean, maybe I'm completely out of scope, but uh, um, if I am creating a group, I, I may not even know that node is associated to other groups. So right. you don't need to. <laughs> yeah. So. It's less a problem for me that, I mean, it's better that each group has its own key. Um, but um, then, um, yeah, Marco, if you're in ACE or TLS, you're, you're still Marco, the same one. So one node can use the same key in various group as well. Um, as long as that key is consistent and works with the algorithm in all yeah. those groups. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. I, I would like this degree of, the, of reusage. So it sounds exaggerated indeed to have one key per group. Uh, it might be needed. Um, it's it's always the... But... Um... I think the point is that we, we need to support several keys and yeah. with several counter signature algorithms, we cannot exclude that. So... Yeah. So right now we are supporting everything, essentially. Uh, as a recommendation, we can recommend nodes, especially the most constrained ones, to go uh, for key reusage, meaning use the same public key in all the groups you can, as long as it works there. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, we don't need to recommend that. I'm writing. I don't think that you cannot have a key for multiple groups. I think that the other way needs to be supported, but it can be done without the KDC's knowledge. Yeah, agree. Uh, we need to support that. We don't need to recommend. We don't need to recommend settings for the groups. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, for the groups, no. 
I, I was thinking of I mean, an old. Like, yeah, but uh, yeah, but I mean, the AS, the, the the settings of this is the counter signature algorithm used that is going to influence if um, which public which signature key you can use, right? Yeah. Yeah. So sure. <laughs> But maybe I missed the point. But why didn't did you want to have such specificities? I, I think the moment you have the group working that way with that algorithm, mm, that means you have to go for that particular kind of keys, not whatever keys. Yeah, but if you don't have it, you don't belong to the group. I mean. Uh... Right, but if you want to work with two groups working with different algorithms, you need two different keys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I well, the the reason I'm asking that is um, I'm wondering if we are not, not making something more complex than it should be. Um. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to see your text and comment on that. OK, <laughs> the, the current text is supporting all this, essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, well, one thing I, I foresee is that it's hard to force to. To um, anticipate on use cases, so. Um, See another question. Uh, starting from the very beginning, um, you are a group administrator. You want groups under the same group manager. Uh, does it make sense that you are able to create them using different signature algorithms? I don't. Well, I would like uh, to have the freedom. <laughs> yeah, you can have the freedom for, um, but um, I think. Good examples could be you have legacy devices mm. and um, more modern. So as long as um, you may, I mean, you may be willing to have the new ones using the new algorithms and maybe not to be stuck with the old ones. So maybe that's um, some scenario we should consider. Mm. Um, And also, um, I mean, every group and its configuration should be independent from each other's. Uh, you'd be a little chaotic to manage something where uh, you update, you change the signature algorithm of a group, and then that change has to be propagated to other groups that are working in a similar way. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's, um, of course, um, groups are, should be seen as independent, I would say. Yeah, right now they are independent, and in principle, you should have one keeper group. But yeah, without the KDC's knowledge, uh, <laughs> that's probably to be elaborated. Yeah. All in all, the KDC can recognize it's you again because of the secure session you have. <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, the, the thing we, I mean, uh, what is the, the attack surface? I mean, it's not that, I mean, if you have two keys for two different groups, I mean, um, I mean, as long as you belong to two different groups, you're, I mean, you're, you, you can do the bridge between the, and leak information from one group to the other. So, uh, the keys are doing very little mm -hmm. to that, um, and keys, the, 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 as you mentioned, one, um, I mean, we, we, I mean, uh, the, I need to understand better the problem, probably. Okay. It's mostly summarized in the latest thread. Okay. We wrote on Jim and me. <laughs> <laughs> to have the full picture, um, Daniel, you can check the other draft we have in ACE on. Um, 
creating a set in the groups. Okay, so the the first group come. Uh, no, Ace, uh, Oscar, GM, Admin. Okay. Okay, any other comments on? Thanks for the discussion already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I think we're done with... Um... Uh, yes, you can already move to slide two actually, and uh, that will be all there. Yeah, again, a summary from the interim, and uh, this was mostly, I'll say, taking care of the review that came from Jim uh, the same day of the interim. Uh, one point is still open, I have it in the next slide, but uh, we also added here considerations on the side of uh, Nancy's again. Uh, it ended up in a brand new section. Um, I think it was easier for this work than, than what we have to do with the Oscar profile and so. Uh, first of all, because NC is always transported in a secure way in a joint request that is protected. And also these two nuances have a much less critical role. This is not about building a security context uh, or not breaking a cipher or anything, but it's just about uh, building a signature challenge. Um, so since... Um, it's in the 64 bit per nance in a critical situation like the Oscar profile or Oscar and so on are, I, I believe, even fine. Uh, here, that is even super fine, but uh, there is a whole security consideration section on that now. Uh, I mentioned also a very tricky thing that I noticed that the previous interim, I summarized that. Um, in a mail proposing a way out. Uh, I got no feedback, so I went for that actually. And I fixed one of the methods provided uh, by the interface of the group manager, so that now the operation that is supposed to return only the group king material without anything individual and individually belonging to that node uh, works according to expectation. So essentially, in that particular method, the response return doesn't include uh, the sender ID that uh, that node has in the group. So it's consistent with what's specified in ASCII group com. Um, we are also clarifying exactly uh, what the group ranking is about, so what exact information we distribute. And this is something we just echoed uh, here too, also for uh, ASCII group com about uh, when, what it is sufficient to um, update the version number of the key material. Uh, feedback from Jim, again, um, the server-side NANS NS was also included in an error response return to the joining request so that a next joining request can essentially build, um, again, a new fresh um, signature challenge to consider just to be sure in case of uh, not too good quality NANS is involved here in the exchange. And um, I noticed we weren't really um, having a very good error handling for the corner case of um, group members configured as monitor only or silent servers in the group of score parlance. Uh, so I had a few lines more to handle errors for them. Um, I mentioned in the presentation before, we, we have defined that new parameter for the joint request control path pointing at a resource local uh, to the group member that um, the group manager can use. And well, we are using here and pointing at that for the sake of operations, like for instance, uh, ricking. Uh, and then last thing, this points again to that other draft we have, I mentioned before, where we describe an interface at the group manager for administrators that among other things can uh, set the group as active or inactive and for a number of reasons, I, I prefer not to go through in detail um, uh, here today, but uh, are documented in the work in progress version uh, of that draft. Um, it is convenient for the group manager to, to notify the group members about the current status um, of the group as active or inactive, or the group members would to check them. Um, so I've essentially uh, extended the uh, original interface uh, from the KDC of ASCII group com. I've extended it here 
uh, with one additional sub-resource of the group uh, that essentially returns true or false um, in case the group is said to be active or inactive. Uh, I thought about this for a while. In the end, I, I thought of defining this here as an extension of the original interface because I'm pretty sure it makes sense and applies here. A problem probably is not so general uh, to be in, in ASCII.com where the KDC uh, is not the broker. Uh, while it is the broker that has all in all a view of active inactive topic. So probably this has to be in case uh, defined somewhere for the broker. Uh, so for the time being, I, I define here as an extension of the main um, reference interface. Uh, with the handler and well description of message exchange and and that should be it and we have one open point in the next slide actually uh, Jim has a comment yes indeed I, I will do that after today's change thanks for reminding <laughs> they have indeed to be consistent um yeah, as of to do, um, other than keeping this aligned for the um, remaining changes in ASCII group count that I mentioned in the previous presentation, um, Jim had a uh, well, request proposals uh, in his review about thinking of enforcing the role of a um, legal requester. So if I understand correctly, something that can be signaled in the public key uh, of this requester um, to indicate the other group members that this sender is a legal requester uh, so that essentially the other nodes uh, really have to reply to requests coming from, from this sender and cannot exactly uh, ignore them. Um, we had some exchange last month after the interim uh, in the mailing list. This probably needs more discussion because um, I'm curious to understand who uh, determines that uh, a node is a legal requester and should be advertised as such. And if that one is not the group manager, uh, how can the group manager verify this before starting to enforce this claim um, in the group? And finally, practically, how can the group manager signal this information in a public key? Jim has a comment in the chat. Okay. Uh, not sure anything can prevent anyone to just send um, messages anyway. So it's more like a trusted sender. You should really listen to. So right now I haven't really defined uh, any of this. But yeah, other than the definition of what that really means, now, now we have more, more text from Jim here. Um, I wonder also of those steps I mentioned before. And yeah, it, it's not of course sure that we really want this. Of course, it's it's a proposal to consider. Starting point could just be one more admitted role in this profile, by the way. Other than requester, responder, and monitor. And as far as I understand, th this is kind of relevant to this profile only. I I'm not sure that can apply also to um, other drafts like PubSub, especially because of the word publish. <laughs> okay. 
So I'm not sure I understand this legal request here. I'm reading James' uh, messages in the chat, but a node which can publish the network as opposed to the one that can only respond, I assume. Uh, is the difference between a requester and a legal requester? Yes, Jim. <laughs> I was hoping to discuss this face to face in Vancouver together with other things at <laughs> the latest. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so are there any things we want to discuss more during this inter interim meeting? Um, it is I not think... clear. <laughs> I, I think it's unclear for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, but uh, I mean, um, I mean, that's, um, we will keep on uh, moving the document. Um, do you think those interim meetings were useful? Yes, I do. Okay, so I have the also, I have, I'm sharing this, this impression. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I think we all know what the next step for each draft is. Um, so, I mean, unless we have any last comments, I think we can adjourn the meeting, I think. Does anyone have some comment or expectation from for the document? No, Okay. Good. Okay, looks good. Well, thank you for um taking part of that meeting. And um yeah, see you. So wait, just one thing. Uh the interim that that is scheduled for in 3 days, that's not happening. Something. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. No, no. Just I to make well, sure. The reason I didn't want to cancel is that I didn't want to cancel the right one, so <laughs> and create more a mess. Okay. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna okay. cancel it tomorrow or today now. <laughs> but uh, no, there is no interim meeting in three days. <laughs> Good. Thanks. And I apologize for the for the mess. <laughs> okay. Right. So see you next time, um, wherever it is, whenever it is. And um, good luck. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye